All right, in the last video, I showed you how to download StratPress 4, which is my starter Bootstrap 4 WordPress theme. Uh, showed you how to download it, CD it into the directory, run a command npm install, and you're pretty much off to the races after that. In this tutorial, I kind of want to go over to the gulp file and show you all the different uh, gulp tasks that you can do in the theme. All right, so you downloaded the theme. You cd'd into the directory down here in your command line. And now I want to show you what you can do with the gulp file. So if you open up this gulp file, as long as you ran npm install in the last tutorial, you should have all these um, packages ready to go and ready to use. So now we can start running these tasks. So for now, we're just going to uh, ignore these variables up here. And we go right here into this, this first one. This uh, gulp task is called zip. And this is just a a task that you can run by doing gulp zip. And what it's going to do, it's going to go through all these directories, which is over here. And it's going to ignore the Bower components and the node modules. And it's going to zip everything up into a package called stratpress.zip. And as you can see here, it ran and it, it automatically put this stratpress.zip package in here for me. So now I can just, you know, give that to maybe a client or I can FTP it somewhere or, you know, that's just the ready theme files to ready to go. All right, the next one uh, I kind of showed in the last tutorial, it's this Gulp Bower. And what this does is it goes, you can see here that it, I have this config Bower directory, which is up here, config Bower directory. It goes and it uses a tool called Bower, which is up here and it just goes and it installs all your Bower components for you. So I did that in the last tutorial. We can run it again if we wanted to. It's just gulp Bower. And what that's going to do is again install all of our Bower components. So that for this theme it would be Fawn Awesome and uh, Bootstrap. Alright moving along we have this icons task and what this is going to do is going to create a icons directory for us for our theme and it's going to take the font awesome fonts so it's going to go into this directory font awesome it's going to grab all these font files and then it's going to create a directory called fonts for us and put all of these font files in that directory for us it's pretty sweet so we can just do gulp icons and then it'll create this fonts directory and move all those files in there for us. That way, our theme can, um, you know, use those font files when we when we call a font awesome icon. All right, and then down here we have um, JS Hint, which is a tool that uh, checks your checks your JavaScript to make sure that you don't have any errors in it, and it just makes sure that it's nice. And you'll see if you have some bad uh, JavaScript as you're writing something. In your in your JS file here, it'll output some errors for you, so you can kind of see where you went wrong there. So um, if we keep going, you can you can run these tasks individually if you want to. But all these tasks, uh, the scripts and the SAS and the SAS men and the images, are all down here in our watch task. So as we run uh, our default gulp, it's going to look at these things here and. Let me kind of go over what these do here. So in our scripts file, you can see that scripts also runs JS hint, which is this up here. But our scripts file, if we go into our manifest, I have it set up where any file that's in your manifest directory here, you can see here that it's looking at uh, Bower components, tether. This is something that Bootstrap needs. And then we have the Bower components we have the bootstrap JS, and then we have our theme JS file here, which is JS, SRC, and then site JS. This is where you you know write all your custom jQuery. But what this script, what this task does here is it rolls through all of our manifest.js and it combines them into one file right here into scripts and scripts min. So if you open this up, you'll see that tethers up here, and if you scroll scrolling down. You know, you'll see that uh, bootstraps added in here as well. And then we, the scripts min is just that same file but minified. This is a great way to do it. So when you're in your um, INC scripts, 
you can see here that I, I add the minified version to our WordPress theme and it only does one HTTP call so you know you can add all these all those scripts manually but every time that your site loads is the browsers having to hit every one of those scripts this way it's all minified into one file so all your JS is just one file one um, load for HTTP to grab so it's real nice to keep your theme minimal you know so it's fast loading and things like that so that's pretty much what uh, the scripts file does you kinda read you know it looks at the manifest create some files in the dist folder, minifies it, and then it has a message for us that says the script's complete. So rolling right along, we have the, the SAS task here. So we have a, a regular SAS, and then we have a minified. It's kind of like the JS up here, but I, I broke them up. So I can create a, a style.css and then a, a style.min.css. So again, minify it, you know, make the file smaller so your theme is a lot faster. So you can see here that I'm including uh, Bootstrap, and then I'm also including Font Awesome. So if you want to include another framework, or you're trying to include, you know, maybe a another jQuery plugin or, or whatever you might be including, you can, uh, you know, install it with Bower, and then you can use this Bower configs to kind of tell it where that file is. So if you follow this path, Bower config, and then you go to Bootstrap, which is right here and then it, SCSS which is right here it's it's looking at that directory so then when we go to our regular SAS folder in our theme here and we go to the of the broad overall style.css we can see here that it's importing bootstrap so this is allowing us to just do this regular import right here you could easily just take this whole string you know this whole path right here and put it in here but it's just a lot nicer you know it looks a lot better so this style.scss is including all of the styles that are in our theme so it's it's grabbing the vars vars which is you know vars right here you can kind of follow along it's grabbing bootstrap it's grabbing font awesome then it's grabbing the site stuff which is right here site and this site includes all these other files so you can see it's just real modular and you know includes things pretty nicely. All right, so like I said, we have a regular SAS um, task and we have a SAS minified task. So um, in our scripts file, in our INC scripts that we included our our minified version, we also have this uh, Stratpress style. Right now, since it's I'm in development mode and I kind of want to see all my styles broken up, it's just including this. But when I go to you know production, I want to make sure to make this path use this minified version. Just a note there. All right, and then moving right along, we have this task images, and um, this optimizes images as you put images into an image directory. So you know you use if you don't use the media you know sometimes you have static images that you use on your site um, as you create an image directory and you put them in there this task will run and optimize them for them so your your image size isn't huge so it uses image opt-in so it's a pretty cool little task all right and the, the last task here is critical and this is kind of a a new thing that bootstrap or uh, Google was wanting when you run the page optimize you might have run um, some things to see if your site is optimized for mobile and you know Google kind of gives you some things that you can work on to make your site better so this critical task loads your page and it spits out just the CSS that's needed above the fold so this will be something that um, I'll probably need to go over in another tutorial to show you how to use but it, it's a, um, you know, it spits out some CSS code for us and creates a directory. And then we can include that at the top of our theme. So right when your theme loads, it'll just grab the CSS that it needs and it won't grab our whole minified with bootstrap and everything else file. So it just makes it again, super fast, super fast loading. All right. And then we have browser sync here, which you seen, you saw in a little bit of the last video. 
when I run gulp and starts running it creates a browser sync for me so it connects it automatically creates a URL for me so as I make changes to my theme it automatically reloads so I can see those changes and again you can go to this URL on your mobile phone so you can you know see the changes on your mobile phone and you can test it on different browsers and, and things like that it's really sweet so uh, this browser sync I'm using uh, MAMP and the options these uh, browser sync options are up here at the top and you probably need to change this I'm using a uh, MAMP Pro so I can kinda of set my own URLs you notice that I'm using help but if you're just using the regular uh, MAMP you this would probably just be local hosts like this and you'll be able to use it but if you're using MAMP Pro you know you want to use whatever setting that you're currently developing your site on so you know I have a lot of different hosts that I'm using and then you know this help you can see here that it's in the directory documents development and then help WP alright and then that pretty much sums it up if you're not familiar with Gulp you have this uh, a lot of people use Gulp Watch, you know, and as you change files, it's watching anything that's changed in this JS directory. It's watching anything that's changed in the SAS directory, you know, JS, SAS, and also that image directory. So if something changes in any of these, then you can tell it to run a different task. So if something changes in the JS, I want it to run this script, the scripts task, which is, you know, up here. It runs that. If I change anything in the SAS directory, I want it to run SAS and SAS min, which is again we went over, and, and as well as images. And you can add several different tasks here if you want to keep doing it. So then the last thing we have here is just the default task, and that's what you saw me run. If I just run gulp, it's going to run this default task, and I'm telling it if I run that default task, I also want it to run the watch task, which is here, and the browser sync, which is here. So that kind of goes over how I use Gulp in my WordPress uh, development. Uh, as we build out themes, and you know, I, I show you how I develop different themes from either a PSD design or just static HTML. We'll use these tasks, you know, a lot, and you'll see how I use them. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and uh, watch some of the other tutorials as I develop other themes, and you can kind of see them how they work.